you know, as we're as you're talking and as we're talking, I had this uh, suddenly this vision of a of a nativity, you know, mm-hmm. set uh, a beautiful one uh, comes to comes to mind, and we're we're drawing near to each of the of the primary characters, right? Yes. In that in that reality, so that we can draw near to Jesus, yes, and maybe help us make that connection. So, in behold, and in mm-hmm. your vision for this uh, deeper dive into Advent, deeper um, immersion of the heart into the reality of Christ, you know, coming again, uh, yes. Christ coming again in our hearts. Um, how do, how did you how do you bring it all to together uh, for mm-hmm. folks? Well, in many ways, it really comes together in the stable <laughs> where Jesus is born. And, you know, it's been likened by many, many people, like our hearts are like a stable. And there's all kinds of things in a stable. There's there's cows and there's, you know, animals and there's drafting is kind of dirty. And, and in that place, Jesus chooses to be born. And he is not afraid of our stable. And he comes to be born in the stable of our lives, in the stable of our marriages, in the stable of our religious communities, in the stable of our families. And it's the very places we think there's no way Christ could want to be born here. He he does. And so he is, is bringing holiness into every single, he's bringing ordered love. He's bringing love and truth to every part of our life. And so as we allow him to, to bring those relationships together, as we allow him to heal those relationships and bring us into wholeness and communion, then our lives take on the vibrancy of Christ. And, and what we see is, our, you know, our family, our family's perfect. No, they're not going to be without fault. They're not going to be without defect. This, this side of heaven, but is the Lord doing something very beautiful in it? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And we don't have to continue to live another year in our families say, you know, many, all of us have stories of families and sometimes, you know, families where one half the family doesn't speak to the other half of the family, or we don't talk to uncle so-and-so anymore, or, you know, just all the things even we do in our immediate families that are that just really don't bring about love or communion. They bring about divisiveness and at least for our end and on our end of the picture, what is Jesus inviting us to this Advent so we can live in humility and truth and, and offer the gift of love. And that is, is a witness. And that's a kind of holiness that can't be faked, right? Where the Jesus comes into our life and he, through his relationship with us and through his presence in us, it's the fragrance of Christ that people encounter. And and that's the journey of our life, but it happens in real ways. And it happens around a family. I think sometimes we think we're healed or we live in isolation. I'll just be holy over here by myself or I'll, mm-hmm. I'll be healed over here by myself. And it doesn't happen like that. It happens in communion in communion with God within ourselves and with other people. So we need each other. And in the mystery of life, God has given us our family and God knows what he's doing in that. And, and so we continue to pray for all the members of our family and ask for wholeness and communion, real conversion of heart, real beauty, you know, real, real reunification in the places where there wasn't and a deeper restoration in the places that are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the things that um, came to mind so vividly when you started to talk about our souls being these stables yeah. with all kinds of, um, you know, untoward things in them. Um, It reminded me years ago, I went through the exercises uh, Mm -hmm. with my director and it, and, you know, maybe somebody needs to hear this because I, I was led to a memory and it brought great shame, Mm. deep ungodly shame. Mm. And what was so fascinating, difficult, and beautiful was that as, as we were talking about inviting God into that, inviting our Lord into that, I remember from this deep sorrow and this deep shame uttering the words, um, he, he can't love me there. Oh, yeah. Like he can love me everywhere else, but he yes. can't love me there. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a an utterance that came out of mm-hmm. a truth yep. of something that I was holding on to. Mm-hmm. And what was so beautiful was then to take that into. We had a, a chapel. Uh, we have a chapel here in the retreat house, but at, at the time we had a chapel on our third uh, story of our house, and I just got on my face. And mm-hmm. I, I took myself just quickly there and I invited the Lord in mm-hmm. and he walked into that memory. And I can tell you, it was the most exquisite experience because it was healed. It was gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All the pain, all the shame, all mm-hmm. of it. 
And he just so desires to meet us in those places, whether it's mm -hmm. in our in our own brokenness, things mm -hmm. that we've done or things that have happened in our family and mm -hmm. the sorrows and the pains and the disappointments. Mm -hmm. And um, because pain just seems to pile on to pain. Yep. Wounds pile on to wounds. I always talk about the enemy being an opportunist. Mm -hmm. You know, he finds that and boy, he's gonna grab a hold of it. He's gonna manipulate mm -hmm. us and and then he's gonna attract other um, of our nemesis to that are similar through other people. Mm -hmm. um, to pile on to that. And it just seems to, to go on and on, but the Lord, if we'll just draw near when he meets us in that it's gone yes. and, and it's, it's healed. It's very mm -hmm. beautiful. 